Madam Speaker, I call the Honourable Carmel. I was Lani. going to launch straight into my speech, but I think it would be disrespectful not to acknowledge some of the speakers that have spoken before me. I want to start with uh, the Honourable Simon Bridges, leader of the opposition, and uh, going to his comment about this being a fake budget. Well, I just want to assure the Honourable Simon Bridges that there is nothing fake about this. The only thing that's fake in this House is the um, perception that that side is trying to give that they unified behind their leader. Um, Mr Speaker, I also want to reflect on Judith Collins' uh, comment. A number of times during her speech she said, when we were in government, telling stories of old when they were in government. Uh, and I just want to remind her that when they were in government, we had the highest levels of homelessness in the OECD. We had en enduring poverty amongst our children that they never resolved or addressed. So perhaps keep those stories for an intimate group. Um, can I also refer to Jamie Lee's speech, probably one Order. of the angriest. Proper name. Jamie Lee Ross's speech, sorry. Probably one of the angriest speeches in this House yelling at New Zealand that this is what they're missing out on. Uh, and, and, and Madam Speaker, I don't think anyone could watch that speech and feel like they were missing out on anything, in fact. And then finally, I just want to reflect on uh, the member Nikki Kay, the Honourable Nikki Kay's speech, and her criticism of our education policy, and just remind her that whilst she was the Minister of Education, there were buildings falling down around her all across the country that she did nothing to address. So perhaps, before throwing stones, reflect a little bit on what was happening when she was Minister. Now, putting all that aside, I just want to say um, how much I'm enjoying being part of this government. And it's been mentioned here in the House today about this wonderful uh, three-way partnership we have going on with our coalition partner over there, with our confidence and supply partners over here. And I just want to say um, that the process that we go through to make decisions is robust. There are amazing minds behind the scenes making the decisions. And I just want to say that this is a fabulous government, and I think that's reflected today in the budget that we've got. As we've already heard in this house from the Minister of Finance, who has done a brilliant job on this budget, by the way, this government is rolling out a comprehensive plan to address the challenges we face as a nation. Many of the challenges are due to the fact that we had a government who neglected this country for nine years. And I want to say vote social development is a pivotal part of that work. The social development portfolio is necessarily broad. It, at its core, it's about ensuring individuals, families and communities have the support and resources they need to be secure and safe and resilient and to meet their potential. We all know, everyone in this House knows that's complex and challenging work. And that's why we're focused on the needs and the rights of people receiving benefits, as well as expanding that focus to meet the needs of the working poor, to meet the needs of disabled people, to meet the needs of students, and of course, to meet the needs of our children. This year's social development budget commitments are built on three pillars. The first pillar is to rebuild what was neglected and to protect our ability to operate in times of crisis. One of the areas we had to do that in um, was respect to improving the resilience of the Ministry of Social Development's critical systems, where we've had to direct $35 million worth of funding. $35 million worth of funding because the infrastructure at the place, in place it has flaws, and if there is a disaster in the Wellington region, then 1.1 million clients receiving or relying on MSD could be affected, and for 20 days, um, potentially, the IT systems could have been offline. What is that like when you come into this job and you see that is the case? Of course, a responsible government is going to respond immediately. The second pillar is to take action now to alleviate the very real suffering we're seeing in our communities. And this government didn't wait for the budget to do that. We did that in our first 100 days by introducing a families package worth $5.3 billion. We need to remind that side of the House. It's not just about what's been announced as part of this budget. It's what we did immediately to alleviate the poverty that we've been watching unfold under their watch. 
From July the 1st, we'll be implementing the winter energy payment to help individuals and families heat their homes over winter. That payment alone will be providing an extra $443 million worth of support for people on a benefit or superannuation for 2018-19. And we've been criticised for giving this to superannuitants. Aww. They don't want us to provide a winter energy payment to superannuitants. And yet, and they say that's not targeted enough, and yet they were willing to give $400 million worth of tax cuts to the top 10% of income earners in the package that they tried to sell but failed to sell to New Zealanders. That's just one of many parts of the family's package. As part of this budget, we're investing $79.82 million in supporting our communities, including the long overdue uh, amount of $76 million over four years to stabilise and strengthen family violence services. They put nothing into frontline family violence services whilst they were in government. Ten years of no funding increases. And now what we're going to see, now what we're going to see is an immediate 30% increase for 150 services providing family violence support. Talking about taking action now, I want to point out that under the previous government, the cost of GP visits rose by 44%. This has made visiting a healthcare professional out of reach for many low-income New Zealanders. Through this budget, all housing New Zealand tenants and New Zealanders that receive an accommodation supplement or income-related rent subsidy will now be eligible for a community services card. All cardholders will also have access to lower-cost GP fees. That's estimated to benefit 540,000 New Zealanders. 540 thousand New Zealanders, and that's another move that I'm proud of. In this budget, we're putting $23.15 million towards supporting our young people in the Limited Service Volunteer Program, and I acknowledge my colleague over there, Ron Mark, and also with respect to the Youth Health and Wellbeing Survey, one of the most valuable surveys to specifically inform our gov how government can design policy that meets the needs of our diverse youth population. I've talked about two of the pillars and given a couple of examples. I want to talk about the third pillar. The third pillar of the social development budget is looking towards the future through a sustained effort to address poverty and support the well-being of New Zealanders. The third pillar will include significant changes to our welfare system, and I know many in the social sector are eager, eager to see this happen, but the work is too important for knee-jerk decisions. This government is committed to the welfare system. This government is committed to overhauling the welfare system, which was part of our confidence and supply agreement with the Green Party, and it's an initiative that is unreservedly backed by this government. As the Minister of Social Development, I want to make sure that we take a careful, considered approach that will have long-lasting benefits for future generations, and we know that any changes that we make on this side of the House have to be enduring. On this side of the House, we believe that New Zealand should be a place where everyone can live with dignity and children have the best start in life. But at this point, at this point that is an aspiration and we can do much better. We want to ensure that the welfare system is doing the job it was established to do, providing real support for New Zealanders at the times in their life when they need it most. Over the last nine years, we have seen the welfare system get further and further away from this. And what that side of the House seems to forget is that the welfare system is there for all New Zealanders. All New Zealanders. 1.1 million New Zealanders per year will access the support of MSD. 1.1 million disabled people, students, our senior citizens, sole parents, young people, all New Zealanders deserve to be treated with respect when they access our um, welfare system. And I want to touch on the fact that we are working on improving the culture that was undermined by that government over nine years to ensure that the people that walk through that door get the respect they deserve. Yes, I just want to say, uh, Madam Speaker, that I am running out of time and I'm not going to get to, to say everything I wanted to say in this speech. But all of these changes that have been announced and spoken about in this House today will go a long way to addressing the needs of New Zealanders. As you can see from Budget 2018, this is a government that actually cares about people. 
We know that fixing long-term problems requires fresh thinking and energy, and we're committed to creating change that will give all New Zealanders a chance for a better future, and Budget 2018 is a major step towards that goal. I call the Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Madam Speaker, I really don't know where to begin because I thought I was going to be the one member of this side of the House that had to come down to the House.